am your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Thursday, November 19th, the year 2020, and something that basketball fans have been waiting for, Big Ten basketball fans have been waiting for, the schedule is finally out. It may not excite you, but for players, coaches, and people like myself, it brings a smile to our face to let us know the season is just around the corner. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Locked on Buckeye. Lined up for today in segment number two, I will tell you what players we should all keep our eyes on that need to play a key role or will play a key role in this Saturday's matchup against the Indiana Hoosiers. Our friend, I say our because it's mine and yours, friend Joel Klatt has some comments on the herd with Colin Cowherd that may scratch your head. You may agree. You may disagree. We begin today's show talking about the thing I mentioned at the top of the show, the Buckeyes basketball schedule. That is correct. Basketball season starts a week from now. The first game of the season is November 25th against, and I got to look at my schedule. I just had it up. It is against the against Illinois State. It is at 2 p.m. on ESPN2 or ESPNU. Many of you out there, are you're so, we are so wrapped up in football season. We are so engulfed into what's going on that some of us may have forgotten basketball is going to happen soon. And I was on a Zoom call, I think it was on Tuesday afternoon, and I talked to a gentleman that hosts the show. Actually, Ben Stevens, host of Locked on Big Ten. I asked him, I said, hey, Ben, have you heard about anything surrounding the basketball schedule? He said, no, not yet. Nothing with the conference schedule, nothing as far as getting it finalized and things like that. But here we are. The basketball schedule is released. Just like the football schedule when that comes out, all we do, we look up and down the schedule. What players should we keep our eye on? What teams should we keep our eye on? Who do we play in the non-conference schedule or non-conference season? Do we have any big-time non-conference matchups? Who do we play in conference play that may trip us up or that may possibly cause us more of a headache than we would like? Well, the non-conference schedule, it hasn't changed much from what we had listed earlier, what we had stated earlier. In addition, Illinois State on the 25th, UMass Lowell on the 29th. We have already mentioned here on the podcast, Moorhead State on December 2nd, Alabama A&M on the 5th of December, going to South Bend in the ACC Big Ten Challenge against Notre Dame. And then you get, you get conference play. You start conference play going on the road to West Lafayette to play the Purdue Boilermakers. Buckeye basketball got some good key pieces coming back. You got Dwayne Washington, CJ Walker, Kyle Young, and EJ Little with some new faces, some new guys coming that'll be very, very key and instrumental in this team being a good, solid basketball team in Justice Suing, Seth Towns, and Jimmy Sotos, who we have also talked about here on the podcast. One thing that I noticed with the schedule when it came out was there are quite a few preseason AP top 25 teams on the Buckeye schedule. They played number five Iowa twice, once at home, once on the road. They played number seven Wisconsin once on January 23rd. They played number eight Illinois twice, January 16th and March the 6th. They played Michigan State twice, Number that they're at number 13, January 31st and February 25th. They played North Carolina, just mentioned it, the number 16 team in the preseason AP poll on December 19th in the ACC. No, not ACC. That's a, a classic they're playing in. The name of it escapes me. CBS Sports Classic, I believe they're playing in that one. They played number 24, Rutgers, on December 23rd and January 9th. And then also they played that team up north, the preseason number 25 team in the, in the country. On February 21st, the Buckeyes are currently ranked number 23 in the preseason AP poll. Yes, we're, we're going to continue talking about, talking about football. We're going to continue the trend of moving the needle and keeping things fluid with football. With Ryan Day and those boys there in the woody practicing, getting ready for this weekend's matchup against the Hoosiers. We're also going to sprinkle in some basketball talk as well. So 
Next Tuesday, we'll be talking about the Illinois State game, what to look forward to. I am not one to give you a preseason record saying, oh, the Buckeyes will be this good. And they, this is the record that I predict they will have at the end of the season. I am not that guy. Honestly, it's so hard to do that because if you would have gone last year to do some preseason rankings for the Buckeyes basketball season, you would have been like, ah, uh, it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard. You wouldn't. The start of the season was a whole lot different than the middle. In the middle was a whole lot different than the end. Yeah, predictions, those style of predictions, they're fun. But that's just something your boy Jay is not just that good at. So he doesn't try it. Sometimes I'm not good at it, and I do stretch myself and expand myself to be better with that. But this is one thing that when it comes to expanding myself and improving myself, these are the type of these are the kind of predictions that Jay does not make one last comment about the basketball team before moving on to our first break. Jay trust Chris Holtman. Jay has trusted Chris Holtman a lot going back to his days at Butler. I think I mentioned it before my brother played basketball at Butler University. No, excuse me, not basketball, wrong sport. Come on, Jay. He's your brother. Your brother played football at Butler University. Uh, started at a D3 school, I think it was Thomas Moore, and then transferred to Butler with D1 double layer FCS level of football that they play there. And I just trusted Chris Holtman. Came in at Butler in a in a tough situation, a situation that nobody really would ask a new coach to take over during, but he did very well in that. Took Butler to another level, not the level that Brad Stevens took them, but at a level that it was still up from the level that the previous coach had them at. And then coming in after that, Amata, somebody that nobody wants to follow in Thad's footsteps, but Chris Holtman has showed he's going to get the best out of his players every single year. And if there was no NCAA, if there was an NCAA tournament this past March, I do believe the Buckeyes had a good shot of making the tournament. And I do believe they'll have a good shot of making the tournament this year year as well. I do believe there'll be an NCAA tournament. The NCAA needs it. Uh, some of the schools need it. And I do believe there will be a tournament, NCAA men's and women's basketball in the spring. Let's step away, take a quick timeout on this WKYC Thursday. Yes, your boy is going to start titling the Thursday every single day episode. Today is devoted to WKYC in Cleveland now, it's not just on WKYC. This show is also going to be shown in video in, I believe, Toledo and Columbus as well. Hey, baby, the show just keeps growing. The show gets bigger. And let's, t- let's step away, hear a word from Coors Light and Built Go, and then get right back into talking about the football team and the Buckeyes and players we got to keep our eye on this coming Saturday. Do you ever feel like you're always on. What do you do when you need a moment to chill? These days, everything is go, go, go. It's nonstop hustle all the time. Work, friends, family, a million pressing social issues, and an expectation to be on 24-7. Well, there's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill and that's Coors Light. Coors Light wants you to know that no matter what sport is on this fall, Saturdays are your time to chill. Watching football is therapeutic to fans. It is uninterrupted me time and an excuse to chill and drink beer. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So if you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's literally made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door at get.coorslight.com. Dot com celebrate responsibly Coors Brewing Company Golden Colorado there's a fad out there there's a trend out there to go ahead when you're down when you're out when you need a little pick me up to go out there and get you an energy drink a, a red bull or a monster those things that are full of sugar and not good for your body ditch those things forget them i have the perfect energy booster for you, whether it's a mental or physical wall, break through it with Go every day. It's easy to take in one and a half ounce packages. Put it in your briefcase for the most focused presentation ever. Your golf bag to power through the back nine, or put it in your pocket to get through the day. Built Go is the best workout gel on the market. It's five hour energy. Notice now 
without the same crash feeling. Plus, it's natural, so it's better for your body. Visit BuiltGo.com and use promo code LOCKED, that is L-O-C-K-E-D, and you will get 20% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED for 20% off at BuiltGo.com. Hashtag Lego. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of, or this episode of, as we continue today's episode of Locked on Buckeyes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team, which happens to be the Buckeyes, every single day. This weekend's matchup against number nine Indiana is huge, not just for conference implications, not just for the Big Ten East. But to simply show the Buckeyes and to show everybody else that even with a week off, the Buckeyes are not out of it and not out of whack. They are up to the task, and they are truly deserving to be 20-and-a-half-point favorites over the Indiana Hoosiers. You can say, Jay, it's Indiana. They are not that good. Have you watched them play football this year? Not last year. Not the year before. not, not, Not five years ago. Not Ty Allen's first year. No, this season, this season, and those of you watching, I'm making a little more, a little bit more animated with my hands. This is just, this is just how I am. This season, have you watched the Hoosiers play football? Have you seen Michael Penix Jr., the guy that set a, a completion percentage record for the Hoosiers last year for a single season, the best one ever in Hoosier history? There is a track record that Indiana has of having really good quarterback play. And Michael Penix Jr. last year, the lefty with the unorthodox release, broke that record, broke and set that record. Have you watched him play this year? Have you seen the defense that, as Zach Osterman of the Indianapolis Star stated, and I said it as well, and there are other analysts out as well, podcasters like myself, analysts you'll watch on TV that say this defense is very and it's very good at capitalizing on opportunities and an opportunistic defense. Have you watched them play? I don't know. A lot of people say, oh, it's Indiana. Oh, it's Indiana. Oh, it's Indiana. But when I watch this Indiana team play, are they elite? I wouldn't say yes. Are they good? In certain areas, maybe, but like Zach Osterman said, I will echo that because he said it at a said it so well. They are very, very good in different areas. One player, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna go around and go back from defense to offense, back to defense, back to the offensive side of the ball. If we have time for the fourth, I know I got two on defense and then I'll, uh, one on offense for sure, but on defense. There's a guy by the name of Sean Wade who's been under who's, – who's been uh, criticized quite a bit. That, had, has he deserved the criticism? Yeah, I think so. You're a leader. You opt out. You opt back in. You're put to the outside of the defense instead of your normal nickel corner spot, slot corner if you want to utilize that way. And what do we see? He's not as bad as what people think, but he is making mistakes in key moments and – He has said it himself. There have been moments where he needs to bat the ball down, not go up with two hands to catch it, bat the ball down, and he goes up to get an interception, not with both hands, not with both mitts. Nope, with one paw, puts that thing up there, touchdown for the opposition. Sean Wade gets scored on. Sean Wade, there are two guys. Now, Sean Wade may mirror Ty Freifogel and and. Uh, 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 excuse me, Watt Philly or things right in front of me. He may mirror them, mirror one of them and go wherever they go on the field, but you may see him stay on one side of the ball. Sean Wade, you are key. I do expect Seven Banks to get picked on. I do expect Marcus Williamson to get picked on just a tad. I expect it. But Sean Wade, you're the leader of the, of the, of the secondary. They're looking to you. 
They are trying to follow in your footsteps. The better you are, it gives them confidence to play better than they may think they can at that point in time during the game. Not talking about numbers right now. I don't need to. Our eyeballs have shown us that the secondary is not playing up to the level that Buckeye fans and Buckeyes believe it can. And it's showing us that our eyeballs are showing us that Sean Wade, the leader, is not playing up to the level that he believes he can and he should play at. Sean Wade, you're very key. Keep your eyes on him on Saturday because if I know Michael Penix Jr., he is going to try his best to get to Sean Wade's head early in that game. So a Ty Fry Fogel, Wop, Wop Fillier, Miles Marshall will all be able to get in his head and move the ball Keep in mind, this, uh, this Hoosiers offense, Ty Freifold was coming off a career game last week. I believe he had 11, 11 catches, two trips to pay dirt. I think he had over 200 receiving yards. He's tied for the leader, as the leader, in receptions on the team with 24 with, between him and Wap Fillier. It's a crazy dynamic. A lot of firepower out there in the receiving game. Sean Wade, we're watching you. On the offensive side of the ball, got to go quickly, y'all. Your boys, your boys talking a lot and almost out of time. On the offensive side, offensive side of the ball, you want to keep Justin Fields upright. I'm, I'm not talking about Fields primarily, um, as far as a key, someone to watch. You know, we all kind of have an expectation for him going into this game. But with Justin Fields being the guy that he is and has elusive as he is, he could be he could kill you with his arm or with his leg. But the Buckers have shown we want to keep him upright, keep him clean, and not have, utilize him like we have in the rushing game. Master Teague, Trey Sermon, very very key for you guys to play your role. Now I do expect the play calling to be specific per player for this game. I do know, uh, not Sean Wade, Ryan Day, I believe, was trying to find situationally where he could put each running back in each situation, try different things with Teague, try different things with Sermon, look to see more player-specific play calls in this game. Sean Wade, not, wow, back to, back to Jay's his offense. Get, stick with the offense. Master Teague, Trey Sermon, establishing the run early. Helps you keep Justin Fields upright. Helps you keep him clean. And it helps the passing lanes to be more open than they would be if the running game was not going on the back to the defense as well. Last but not least, you want to get into the head of Michael Penix Jr. early. Think back to the Indiana Penn State game early in the season. What do we see late in the game? Caleb Jones, left tackle at Indiana, had trouble with Shaka Tony, defensive end of Penn State. And over and over, Shaka Tony, Shaka Tony, Shaka Tony was like, we heard his name over and over and over late in the fourth quarter and in overtime. Shaka Tony was getting right to Penix Jr. Well, you have Jonathan Cooper, Tyler Friday, Javante Jean Baptiste, uh, uh, Harrison. Why is his first name escaping me? Keep them there. Keep them doing exactly what their role is and allowing Penix Jr. to not get comfortable. You want to derail this offense of the Hoosiers? Don't let Penix Jr. get comfortable back there in the pocket. we got to step away one more time. Those of you watching in Cleveland, Toledo, or Columbus, WKYC in Cleveland, we're going to keep on moving along. Those of you there on the podcast side, the audio-only side, we'll be right back. This weekend's matchup against the Indiana Hoosiers has gotten a lot of attention, not just for myself, other analysts you listen to. And in doing so, it's going to, you're going to have people like Joe Klatt that will be on shows like The Herd with Colin Cowherd. And what, you, what you'll find is that when they, when they answer questions and when, they, when they're asked questions about the Hoosiers, about the Buckeyes and the team that the Buckeyes will put on the field, what we will find is you're going to find exactly how people feel in the proper analysis. That's one thing I like about Joe Klatt. He doesn't hold back and he doesn't sugarcoat anything. Even if it's his own Colorado Buffaloes where he played football in college, he's not going to sugarcoat 
anything. So when he was on the herd with Colin Cowherd, he was asked about this game, about this matchup, and he had these things to say about this year's Ohio State Buckeye football team. Some of you may agree. Some of you may disagree. Let's listen to what Joel Klatt said. Quote, remains to be seen comparing them to the other teams, end quote. Now, he's describing this team versus last year's team, if they're good, if they're if he's com- as comparing them to the 2019 version of the Buckeyes, he is saying that, well, it remains to be seen comparing them to the other teams, how good this team exa- actually is. Let's keep on going. Quote, let's just compare them to last year's Ohio State team. They are not as good as last year's team. They are better at quarterback and wide receiver. Justin Fields is maturations the last few years. He is terrific, and he'll probably get selection number two overall in the draft. I will tell you this, though. J.K. Dobbins is a huge loss. He was a 2,000-yard rusher, and he was a home run hitter at running back. They're having trouble to try and create things from a running perspective. Defensively, they've got great players on defense this year, but you do not play as potent of defense. When you have three top 16 picks leaving the roster, when you look at that at the metrics, Ohio State is not as dominant as they were last year. This year, we have to piece it together. There will be more pressure on fields to be superhuman at times. I will tell you, they are in for a fist fight against Indiana. Indiana has gotten better and getting better and better. Their quarterback is good. Their defense is salty. Fields is going to go under the under the pressure cooker this week, end quote. And on the surface, when you mentioned J.K. Dobbins, that loss is huge. And to most of you, that's not disputable. You understand the loss of J.K. Dobbins is big. But think about this, though. Think about Proctor. Not Proctor. Um, Arnett. You think about uh, Jeff Okuda. You think about the guys that were on the Jordan Fuller. That's what I was thinking of earlier. You think about the guys that were in the secondary last year that that were seasoned, that had experience, that had been around a while, that had seen multiple things from the opposition opposing offenses to try to throw their way. It's tough. Think about losing a Chase Young. Yes, the linebackers that the Buckeyes have, they are, they've are they been around at the Buckeyes for a very, very, very long time. But at that same time, they're in different positions. And those guys with Baron uh, Browning, Baron Browning, I'm trying to say his first and last name at the same time, messed that up with Browning, with Borland, with Werner. They're playing better. When you lose a guy like a Chase Young, and before that you had a Nick Bosa, before that you had a, a Joey Bosa, and before that you go back, you go back before that, you had a guy in Sam Hubbard who was not as good as the others, the Bosa brothers and, and Chase Young, but he was still there, and he was a solid defensive end that is now playing in the National Football League. You heard me earlier talk about Trey Sermon and Master Teague and their role and how we should watch them, and I could have gone on for probably 30 minutes about the players that we should watch during this weekend's matchup. The Buckeyes team itself, not as good But that's not a problem. You can win consistently with this team this year. Joel Klatt, the analyst, I like him. I really enjoy him. The way that he comes across as just being a a guy, a a football guy, something that someone that you and someone that you and I can just relax, sit back in our chair, put him on TV. You know him and Gus are going to put a good old call on. Jenny Taft on the sideline will give us great analysis and keep us up to date with injuries and things going on during timeouts, during the game. Yeah, Joel Klatt's my guy. Some of you will say, Joel, what are you talking about? This team is actually pretty good. Uh, Just not playing up to par. Well, that's why he's saying, and he's comparing them to last season and saying they're not as good as last year. Go back and look and watch some games from last year. If you don't have time or you say, Jay, I don't have time, go back and look at the numbers from last season, the rushing numbers, the passing numbers. Even though the passing game is is better, look at the passing numbers. Look at the what players got drafted where they got drafted how many were in the first round how many were in on day two or on day three how many were undrafted free agents that got picked up go back and look at that 
Go back and look at the, the defensive numbers. Go back and look at everything in totality that goes with last year's team. Saying this team is not as good as last year's is not a slight. I think it's proper analysis. And as we've looked at this team, struggle to run the ball at times. Issues in the interior of the offensive line. Defensive, the interior of the D-line, phenomenal. The defensive ends of the out on the Buckeyes, not as good as last year. That's not a problem. They're doing it by committee and doing a phenomenal job. Linebackers, solid. Secondary questions. Kickers got an injury. You got a. You literally had a guy lose his black stripe, and a few days later, step on the field for the first time and make his first kick as a Buckeye. That, that's one thing that I love about football and I love about sports. There are growing pains. There are times where you have to improve quickly. You have to get better and better and better and better, really, really fast. And the test, the test this weekend against the Hoosiers. Nothing to sleep over, nothing to walk over. Stevie Scott, I believe he leads the Big Ten in rushing attempts this year. Another guy you got to keep your eye on. They'll sprinkle in Samson James, a former Ohio State commit who decommitted and decided to stay in state and go to the in, go to Indiana down there in Bloomington, Indiana, to play his football. Guys on the defense, defensive side of the ball, Reese Taylor being one that I watched play in high school, play quarterback, and now he's taking his skills, what he learned as a quarterback in high school, to the def- defensive side of the ball, and it's playing very, very well. The Buckeyes this weekend, even though they're not as good as they were last year, that was a really, really good team, a team you rarely see put together. This year's team is going to be good. It is good. It's up to the task. You'll find out tomorrow my keys to victory, who I think will win, and what I think may happen during the game also mentioned mentioned uh, i meant to mention this earlier head over to locked on big 10 big 10 ben ben stevens is doing a phenomenal job he normally has two guests on thursdays well i believe he's having four on thursdays and i am one of the four that happen to be uh, there on the podcast go there check it out locked on big 10 ask me three quick questions right at the top of the show Boom, 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 quick analysis, quick hitters. Get in and out as quick as possible. Go check that out. And also, check out other shows around around Big Ten Country on the Locked On Podcast Network to get used to and get acclimated and get familiar with things going around going on around Big Ten Country. Thanks so much for coming back, guys. WKYC in Cleveland, those of you in Toledo or in Columbus, Thanks for watching and enjoying another episode of Locked On Buckeyes. Those of you that, those of you that are watching via video, my pop, my Twitter handle is right there pointing at it. Go on your phone, go search the Twitter, type in at jsteven07. Those of you that are podcast listeners, you can follow me there. If you want to follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Buckeyes. Remember, guys, five-star reviews, five-star reviews. Fill up the review section with five-star reviews. Go ahead and f- fill that thing up if you're an Apple user. Other places you can listen to and enjoy Locked on Buckeyes, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, just to name a few places you can listen to and enjoy Locked on Buckeyes every Monday through Friday, five days a week. We will be back tomorrow morning bright and early with Keys to Victory Things we need to look out for that will help us get prepared and properly get ready for the upcoming matchup this Saturday against the Indiana Hoosiers.